In this video, join me while I unbox the Ryzen 5 3500 processor from AMD and let's find out how to apply thermal paste to the CPU effectively. Let's get started. Hello sweet people, today I am going to show you my new Ryzen 5 3500 processor from AMD and discuss a little bit about its specifications. And yes, I have turned to the red team at this stage after using Intel processors for a long time. It's exciting and at the same time terrifying. This is my first AMD processor and AMD product for that matter. I don't know whether this will be long term, but for now, I will just enjoy the moment. Stay until the end of this video. We are going to attempt to explore a few ways to apply thermal paste and see the most effective as suggested by the great vine. At the time I ordered this CPU, the internet has said that it is a bad time to build a computer at the moment because of the new CPUs from Intel, which are rumored to launch pretty soon. But never mind, I'm not sponsored, so I don't care. I, it will cost me an arm and a leg anyway. Building a PC in Singapore is really easy. Aside from the prices are competitive, you can virtually find all the common PC parts and some exotic ones locally via online marketplace like Lazada and Carousel. However, due to the COVID-19 circuit breaker, shipping may take a week or two. In fact, I'm still waiting for my RAM to be delivered by a local courier service named Ninja Van. I may have to cancel it though, because this came in the mail. This will replace the Corsair memory sticks that I was planning for my ITX build. Ryzen 5 3500 processor information was difficult to find even at AMD's website. I reached out directly to AMD but they don't have it either although they have provided me two links to third party sites. The links are in the video description if you are interested. Let us talk about a little bit of specs. Ryzen 5 3500 is a 6 cores, 6 threads processor with a base clock of 3.6 GHz which promises to boost to 4.1 GHz. So even if it doesn't support multi-threading, it is com capable of computing really fast. This is not an APU. An APU is a processor with a built-in GPU. This one requires a discrete video card, hence the price. It is based on the Zen 2 architecture and the third gen of Ryzen. In their marketing, it supports PCIe version 3 and version 4. The Grapevine recommended to pair it with at least a 16GB 3200 gigahertz of RAM to add more performance benefits. I know the interweb has recommended the Ryzen 5 3600 but there was no CPU and motherboard combo deal at the time that I was hunting for parts. Uh, so I got these instead. And if I were to buy the Ryzen 5 3600, it is 25% more expensive than the Ryzen 5 3500. The ITX motherboard plus the Ryzen 5 3500 
cost me 380 and 49 cents Singapore dollars so I think I got a great deal despite it lacks on the threads department I am still happy with this CPU because on paper the specs are great for gaming in fact 3500's gaming performance is comparable or might be better to Intel's i5-9400F which is a 6 cores and 6 threads but with a hefty price tag. This is the only reason why I made the switch to AMD because they give you a bang for your buck. By the way, check out NJ Tech's side-by-side -side comparison of Intel's i5-9400F versus AMD's R5-3500 in the link on the video description. So, the question here who is it for well the answer is for me I'm stuck with a third gen i5 processor for almost five years now and the age of the CPU is showing and I cannot dismiss the fact that AMD is giving Intel a run for their money Intel is getting a great competition from AMD in the computer department now Although the CPU is under 200, still it is not cheap. I chose this because it will future proof my build for 3 to 4 years at least, which all PC owners need to tick that box. And lastly, if you are currently rocking a great GPU, the Ryzen 5 3500 is the best choice. Gaming performance is really great like what I said earlier so in conclusion if you want to upgrade to a much better performance per core from an old system without breaking the bank this is your best choice now moving to thermal paste application and this exercise I won't be using uh, this product instead I'm going to use a toothpaste so why use a thermal paste why not just attach the CPU cooler directly once it's clamped and tightened heat should transfer from the CPU's integrated heat spreader which is IHS to the cold plate of the CPU cooler I wish it was that simple I am not an expert but I will try to explain it in a layman's term. We all know that when the CPU is in use it generates heat and that heat transfers to the IHS. The IHS alone cannot cool it down though. So that's where the CPU coolers come in. If the CPU cooler was slapped directly to the CPU's IHS without a thermal compound, heat transfer to the cold plate of the CPU cooler will not be efficient. To the naked eye, the IHS and the cold plate surface looks flat, but if you look closer, it is not. Imperfections are there which creates gaps or air pockets between the IHS and the cold plate which affects the heat transfer to the CPU cooler. That's where the thermal compound steps in to fill the gaps. By the way, I borrowed this clip from Gamers Nexus channel. Sorry guys at Gamers Nexus. I'm not good at creating animations so I borrowed this part. Thank you for understanding. You can find the link on the video description where I got the clip from. Uh, please go to their channel and don't forget to subscribe. They're mind-blowing there. Back to the topic. Rule of the thumb. Don't apply too much of the compound. As long as most of the IHS area is covered with the paste, you're all good. If you put too much, it will be messy. There are no performance benefits. And if the paste is conductive, it may cause short circuit in your system, which you don't want. 
Linus Tech Tips has also made a video dedicated to answer the question of how much paste is needed and what is the best method. The link to that video is on the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to their channel. Before we move to the experiment, please don't forget to like this video or not. Regardless which one you choose, please subscribe and leave a comment below. I am going to use this Intel CPU as the subject. Thank you. 